Welcome to the first in a new video series that I am calling Page to Picture, where I compare an original novel with its film adaptation. This is something I've wanted to do for a while because honestly, I'm as big a fan of film as I am of novels. And I really wanted an excuse to do something fun like this. That excuse came around when I went to see The Watchers by Ashana Knight Shyamalan, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, which is a film adaptation of this, the Watchers by Irish author A. M. Shine. I read the novel, I watched the film, and I have thoughts. And my first thought is simple enough, the book is better. But honestly, comparing a book and a film is a tricky thing to do, and it's something that I don't always agree with, even though that's literally the point of this entire series. Books and films are very distinct mediums in so many different ways. Books are often a singular vision, while films are made by an enormous cast and crew. They use entirely different techniques to tell their stories, and I could go on and on. But the fact remains that The Watcher's book is better than the film. So why? First of all, in case you haven't seen it or read it, The Watchers, both the book and the movie, is a kind of gothic horror story set in Ireland. There is a forest in Ireland which people occasionally go into and they never come out. Cars break down at the edge of this forest. Electronics don't work inside. And our protagonist is a young woman named Mina. Between the book and the film, Mina is a slightly different person, and we'll get into that in a second. But in both, Mina is given a parrot and told that she has to take this parrot from A to B. To get to B, she has to travel through the forest. When she gets to the edge, her car breaks down, and so she has no other choice but to walk through the forest. While she's in there, she starts hearing noises. The place has a kind of dizzying and disorientating effect. She gets turned around, and just before danger creeps a little too close to her, she finds a kind of bunker. This concrete shed. And she's invited in by this middle-aged woman, who says, run, get here now, you've got a few seconds before I shut the door. So Mina pelts it to the door, she gets inside in the nick of time, and what she finds inside is a handful of people. You have the middle-aged Madeline, a very naive young woman named Kira, and a boy called Daniel, who's in his late teens. Kira originally arrived at the forest with her husband, John. In the prologue, again, both in the novel and the film, John sets out into the forest to try to find a way out and therefore get help. But John dies in that prologue. He is caught and torn apart, eaten, killed by something. The forest is full of these somethings, these unknowable, unseeable monsters called the Watchers. The big question of the story is, what are these Watchers, and why are they called that? Well, because this bunker sits in the middle of this forest, and every night the light comes on inside, and one of the walls is a two-way mirror. The characters can only see themselves in it, but the Watchers on the outside are looking in, examining, and studying these people. What are they? What do they want? How did all this get here? Who built this bunker? What are the secrets of this forest? There's a lot to learn here, and you do learn all of it, eventually. That's your setup. Now, the novel is fantastic right from the get-go. The thing that really struck me is how well it's written. There is so much humanity to these characters. Shine takes plenty of time introducing these people and developing really tangible and three-dimensional personalities for each of them. Especially Daniel, this poor teenage boy who ran away from an abusive home, hates his father, and develops a very sore and tender relationship with Madeline because Madeline is not very nice. She treats Daniel like crap. She is impatient with him. She demands things from him. And he just over and over and more and more as time goes on, sees Madeline the same way he saw his father, just this abusive middle-aged person who just won't show him any respect and treats him like crap and belittles him. Madeline and his father, they're the same person. And so their relationship as the story goes on becomes very, very frayed. A lot of strain, a lot of tension, you wonder what will eventually happen between the two of them, because this tension has to break. None of that, by the way, is in the film. 
Daniel and Madeline are similar characters in the film, but far more two-dimensional, and the relationship between them is barely existent. They are just two people who live in this confined place, and they get on each other's nerves, but there isn't this brilliant parent-child tension between them. In the novel, everyone is Irish, but in the film, Mina is American, played by Dakota Fanning, who does an okay job with a very bland script. I don't know how you write such a bland, flat, uninteresting, uninspired script based on a novel full of really rich, gothic, exciting, emotive dialogue. In fact, I honestly wondered at points when I was watching the film whether or not it was written by AI. It is so flat, so uninspired. And cringe, honestly. There's so much useless exposition that didn't need to be there. Once again, the novel manages it. This is Ishana Knight Shyamalan's debut film, obviously a product of nepotism, and she is a serviceable director. She's got a good novel to work off, and she directs a decent enough film. The casting is fine, the actors perform their lines well enough, based on, as I've said, a pretty bland script. The musical score is forgettable, there are some nice shots, there's some decent cinematography, but ultimately I didn't really care. It feels very unoriginal, very paint-by-numbers. The novel, however, is an original premise, and it feels less original now that you have a film adaptation of it, and that film doesn't do the book justice, which is a real shame. But like I was saying, Mina is American in the film, and this this kind of irritated me because it felt patronizing to American audiences, like they couldn't bear to even imagine American audiences watching a film with an all-Irish cast set in Ireland. One of them had to be an American immigrant, right? Kira in the film as well is English. She's very naive and sweet in both, but in the novel she is traumatized by the fact that her husband went out into the forest and never came back. She remains kind of stupid all the way through, but she has this weight on her shoulders, this emotional trauma about what happened to John. Whereas in the film, when Mina arrives and she's chatting with Kira, Kira's like, yeah, I came here with my husband John, he went out to get help, everything's fine. And like, the Kira of the novel is hilariously naive, and that also irritates Madeline. But the way that naivety is expressed in the film feels impossible, feels childlike, feels as though this marriage couldn't possibly work because she doesn't have a fully formed mind. <laughs> There's a difference between writing a hopeful and naive character who doesn't know much about the world, and writing someone who doesn't see the wood for the trees, doesn't see things as they simply are. Which is kind of ironic given the situation they're in, and that that situation is in a forest. Now one of the big exciting mysteries, and also one of the tense horrors of this story, is the Watchers themselves. What are they? Where did they come from? What do they want? And also, what do they look like? I have to admit, when I started watching the film, I was really excited about how they were going to handle that. The great reveal about what these monsters are. What do they look like? How do they behave? How do they move? How do they speak? And it's just CGI monster blah. It's very uninteresting, and there is a unique thing about these monsters, something that they can do, and the film uses very uninteresting CGI to depict that thing that they can do. It was fine, serviceable. In the novel, there's more mystery. Even though, obviously, you cannot see them, the way that they are described feels like they're being described from the side, like you only ever see them in the periphery of your imagination. You are free to imagine these things however you like, based on how they're described to you, but it still feels like it's hard to actually paint a clear picture and look at them head on. There is a sense that we are always just looking at them a little bit to the side. It's a really amazing way of describing these creatures. Shine pulls it off so beautifully, so brilliantly. There's a moment early on where Madeline explains to the rest of them that they are kind of humanoid, but they are longer, thinner. I love that ambiguous phrase, longer. What does that mean exactly? It's up to you to conjure an image, but when it comes to film, the director has to have a vision for what that looks like. And so the art team and the CGI team put together something, and that something is unfortunately boring, as are the characters, as are their relationships. The plot of both is almost identical. So much of what plays out really is similar. But Mina, between the two, is given a different backstory. The film couldn't resist giving her a really tragic past, something terrible that happened in her childhood to drive the American Mina to move to Ireland. She has run away from her past, run away from her childhood trauma. In the book, she's a little simpler than that. 
and it's kind of refreshing. She doesn't get along with her sister very well. She spends a lot of her time sketching people. She sits in a pub and sketches the people around her. She gives them all nicknames based on what they look like and kind of caricatures them. And she does a lot of sketching throughout the story. In the film, the sketching doesn't really make any sense. Mina works at a pet shop, and that's why she has the parrot. But why she sketches is beyond me. There's also a ridiculous moment in the film early on where Kira points to a bunch of different flowers and plants and talks about their herbal properties and how she mixes a medicine for Daniel because he gets headaches and you think, okay, that's a Chekhov's gun. It has to go off later in the story. What are these herbs for? What are these plants for? She knows herbalism, she must put it to good use. No. Absolutely not. That gun doesn't go off. It is pointless, and it's not in the novel at all. It was put into the film to make Kira slightly more interesting, that she knows herbalism and traditional medicine, and no, no, it doesn't mean anything. And there's lots of moments like that in the film where a character is given some kind of a trait or a bit of their backstory that in no way feeds into their relationships or into the plot. You have a complete novel with complete characters, with complete relationships. Everything is there handed to you, and you as a director, a screenwriter, have decided for some reason to adapt and change these people add in your own stuff, and none of it works? None of it fits together properly? All of it is cringe and flat and boring? With a very, very two-dimensional script that feels like it was written by AI? I don't know how you take a book with really good dialogue and then write bad dialogue for a film adapted from it. That's impressive, honestly. The Watchers movie by Ashana Night Shyamalan is a perfect five out of 10. It works. It is serviceable. It is completely mid. It is a paint-by-numbers horror movie. But the novel is really, really excellent, thanks to its very dynamic and fun dialogue, its intense character relationships, and the way everything is described with this dripping gothic atmosphere. The novel is gothic. The film doesn't feel gothic. There's a labyrinthine element to it, but there is no atmosphere. And that's heartbreaking, honestly. I wholeheartedly recommend The Watchers to any horror fan who enjoys good horror fiction. This is a piece of gothic terror. It is tense, it is full of mystery, and our characters are really well written, especially the relationships and dynamics between them. The film misses out on pretty much all of that. It takes this, it hollows it out, and it churns out a serviceable mid-horror movie that is fine. It'll do. I really hope you like this. Let me know if you want more of these. I really want to do a whole series on it, so tell me about it in the comments. Support me on Patreon if you'd like to, and subscribe for books.